Hey, what's going on, everyone? This is Mitch. Good Tuesday evening to you all. Hope you guys are doing well out there. Have had yourselves a great day and a great work week out there so far. First evening video since I think last Wednesday when uh, we were breaking out all that crazy severe weather that was ongoing. Uh, so uh, good, good to be back in the swing of things with the routine of pumping out two videos a day. And there is some things we need to talk about. Um, of course, if you clicked on the video, you're thinking uh, the ma majority of this video is going to be discussing what could potentially happen towards the end of the work week with a severe weather event expected in the plains but we're going to talk a lot about what's going to happen over the next two to three days real well one to three days uh basically the rest of the work week for here in the southeast also uh we pretty much have a little bit of a spin in the northern gulf of mexico right now just south of louisiana mississippi and alabama and uh, can this thing gain any kind of tropical characteristics with it as of now we're thinking it's not but I wouldn't rule out anything, and we'll talk about that. I don't want to get too ahead of myself right here uh, a little bit later in the video. We're going to discuss everything about how the spin could bring some severe weather, gusty winds, and the potential for a lot of rain over the next uh, 48 to 72 hours for some areas of the southeast. So if you folks have not subscribed, certainly consider doing that. Like the video if you like it. It goes a long way, especially when things kind of start to slow down like they kind of are right now. And uh, if you guys got anything that I can pray about or pray over, as always, you know the deal, please put it in the comments below so I can pray over it and so others can do so too. Let's get rolling. Water vapor loop. You can already see this spin right into here. A lot, somebody asked this morning, is the reason why you picked pink because of your daughter? No, believe it or not, my two little girls, uh, I think they like to be rebels. So they actually say they don't like the color pink. But uh, I, I just do it just because it, it kind of sticks out. But there's a little bit of a spin right here. Uh, let me uh, let me take this off really quick. You see this spin? There's a little bit of a low trying to develop, a little bit of a Gulf low, but it's a non-tropical low. But if it hangs out in the Gulf of Mexico for too long, temperatures in the Gulf of Mexico in Fahrenheit, uh, upper 70s, a couple buoys might be registering around 80 degrees Fahrenheit. But eventually this will kind of drift and uh, kind of into these regions and eventually, you know, might make a landfall then sort of drift in this direction and cause, uh, you know, some rain in this region, maybe even some severe weather in that same area. So uh, we're certainly watching this and then we'll watch for an upper trough that digs down, ejects a low somewhere right in this region up into here, create some severe weather down here later into the week. So we're going to talk about all that in this video. So uh, there is a marginal risk for severe weather hugging the immediate Gulf Coast line. And I'm talking about you, you got to be within like 30 miles of the coast. Uh, Mobile, Alabama, you know, not even all the way to Tallahassee, uh, Gulfport, not even all the way to New Orleans. Very small section. And this could expand a little bit further north. Wouldn't be surprised. But this little bit of area, you got to watch out for some water spout action. If you're vacationing along the Gulf Coast in these regions down here in this very small green area, I would not be surprised one bit if you're chilling on your hotel, uh, looking out over the Gulf of Mexico and you see a water spout. It would not surprise me one bit. It's crazy, guys. I've seen a tornado. I've seen, I believe, three or four tornadoes in my life, but I've never seen a water spout. So, uh, you know, a little bit of some news there. But anyways, there is a chance definitely to see some water spouts out there in the Gulf of Mexico. And, you know, there is a chance for a tornado on land. And then you got the wind threat, 5% risk, and not really much of a hell threat with this. But... Um, and then you got a severe weather threat for Thursday. Okay, so uh, right now there's a marginal risk for severe weather. We'll see if this uptrend will slight. Uh, there is going to be a little bit of a chance for some spin ups, basically with this low that's going to be right in here. And basically on that, you know, that right, that eastern quadrant of these lows, even when they're weak and not really tropical, they have a little spin to them. And they kind of bring their own low level jet if you will, these upper lows, cut off lows, tropical systems, whatever it may be, brings its own wind profile, if you will, aloft. So we'll watch in this area as we get into Thursday for a severe weather uh, uh, threat. Um, and I, like I said, I wouldn't be surprised if this uptrends to a slight risk here in the coming day or two. And then we got a bigger severe weather event, but I wouldn't call it an outbreak by any means. I think this is going to be conditional meaning there's going to be a solid cap in place, which is warm air aloft, uh, that could prevent these storms from fully taking advantage of uh, a low pressure that's going to eject across the plains. But there's a 15% risk for Friday. Day four, slight risk, level two out of five. 
um, for Friday in this yellow area. 15% risk of severe weather. All hazards possible. And uh, we'll, we'll, we'll definitely get a little bit more details over the next uh, one to two days for sure. So let's talk about uh, the near term. Okay, we'll start this off Wednesday morning. First off, let's look at the radar out of New Orleans. Look at all this just moisture. You got a little bit of a spin right in here, a little bit of a spin trying to develop right in here. We'll see if there is a solid spin that really takes over and then tries to maybe move north. Does any kind of spin get going right in here? Uh, the longer it stays over the, the, the warmish waters of the Gulf of Mexico, it's still April, the higher the chance that we could have a sneaky event here, subtropical system. I'm, I'm not buying it, but listen, nothing will surprise me. It always seems like these early season tropical systems or systems in the Gulf of Mexico uh, just surprise. You just never know. They like to do it really in May. Uh, April, Mid-April is pretty early, but I wouldn't write off anything. The Gulf of Mexico um, is one of the warmest bodies of water on Earth. Uh, I believe the Mediterranean Sea is a very warm body of water, too. Um, but, you know, especially once you get a little bit deeper into the year and the summer, it is uh, like bathtub water down there. I don't know if, if you're viewing and never been to the Gulf of Mexico, like the west side of Florida, the waters there are much warmer than the east side. But if you've ever been to the Gulf of Mexico in like July and August and you stick your toes in the water, you don't have to adjust the water at all. It feels like you're just stepping into a bathtub. It's pretty wild. Um, but anyways... Uh, we'll start off tomorrow morning. Um, heavy rain, just hugging the immediate coastal regions of Louisiana. This will grow. Let's get this in motion here. This will gradually try to work its way north. Heavy rain, not really much of a severe weather threat, but you know, as we get a little bit later into the afternoon, look at the H triple R model as we get into tomorrow evening. It tries to start now. I want to remind y'all. These short-range mesoscale models are terrible with the tropics. A lot of people love to show the NAM for the tropics, but it's a horrible model to show for the tropics. And the HRRR model is, but don't, don't focus on this intense spin. But it wants to develop an all-out tropical storm with this piece of energy. We're getting into about 12, 1 a.m. tomorrow night, and it has an all-out solid, almost like a, 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 like a, a, a eye wall developing down here with a tropical system. And this is bringing actual outer bands into the Gulfport, Mobile, Alabama areas, into the Western Panhandle of Florida. Do I buy this? I don't. But do I rule it out? Absolutely not. Um, the, but this is pretty wild to see. The HRRR model has an all out tropical system making landfall Thursday morning. Um, but, you know, tomorrow, okay, there is going to be a chance, like I said, with this Marginal risk for Wednesday. There is going to be a chance for some of these showers and storms to make their way into the panhandle of Florida. And some of these could be a spin up. This could be more widespread than what this is showing. Some of these could provide a spin up here in the western panhandle of Florida. So please be aware of that. Even especially, I would say, especially as you get into tomorrow evening and the overnight hours, I would say that's actually probably where you want to watch. It almost has two little spins right here. One right here, one right here. Very interesting feature. Okay, but we'll have to watch this. This is one of those things where I'll tell you one thing in the evening and then we'll wake up tomorrow and we have the breaking news. These systems are tricky. Am I saying we're going to have Arlene, the first name in the hurricane 2023 list? I don't think so. No, most likely not. But I've seen weirder things happen. So the Gulf, of, we call it the um, uh, Gulf of Mexico magic, man. It, it, it can It can do some crazy stuff with those warm waters. But we keep this going, and we only can go out 48 hours. Um, but, you know, it still has that little spin right here, right on top of Gulfport. But look at these little storms developing. And this is why you watch out for the severe weather events Thursday. Now, this is only goes out to about 2 p.m. Eastern time, 1 p.m. here in Central time. But you got to watch out for these little showers and storms that you see right here. Already getting going in southern Alabama, southwest Georgia. These could produce a quick spin up. I would not be surprised if, if these are spinning a little bit here in the panhandle of Florida, getting into Thursday afternoon. So please be aware of this and don't be surprised by it. These will probably be little weaker spin ups. I don't want to show you this just for laughs, okay? This is what the H Triple R model wants to do tomorrow night. It develops a solid tropical storm. It wants to have 70 to 80 mile per hour wind gusts moving into southeast Louisiana. Um, tomorrow night into the wee hours of the morning, Thursday morning. It's pretty wild. 
not buying it, but I am buying gusty winds. Gusty winds along the Gulf Coast and the Deep South for sure. Rainfall between now and the duration of this, this event, basically Saturday morning, you could see four to five inches of rain down here in southeast Louisiana. One to two inches of rain here in Gulfport, Mobile. Same thing, the western panhandle of Florida into the Big Bend, Big Bend areas, one to two inches of rain is likely. Okay. Um, Kind of getting a little bit deeper into Thursday. Um, we will focus on the NAM because the HRRR model only goes out to 48 hours. Uh, NAM goes out about 60. So uh, I, I like what it's showing here. We're getting into 1, 2 p.m. Eastern time for Thursday. Thursday, not tomorrow, Thursday. Numerous showers and storms riding all the way through Alabama. Uh, moving up further north into Georgia. Uh, Panhandle of Florida. These could be a quick spin up. Some damaging winds are possible. Just gusty, uh, gusty winds. But remember, there is going to be somewhat of a favorable kinematic atmosphere. Kinematic meaning a little bit of a favorable wind profile aloft to put a spin to some of these showers and storms as we're getting into Thursday afternoon. That's why you have a marginal risk for severe storms right into here. And I wouldn't be surprised if they put a slight risk, a 5% risk. In this area here in the next 24 to 48 hours but you know this goes only goes out to about 60 hours and eventually some of these showers and storms make it all the way into south carolina which i think in the carolinas it could be a really rainy day for friday for our ending of our work week but rain rainfall in these areas between now and the next um all the way basically through saturday you know you get into Atlanta, maybe a half an inch of rain same thing with columbia augusta three-fourths of the inch of rain i think south georgia is good for widespread one inch rainfall totals and then all of north florida one to two inches of rain is possible we'll get a little bit more into florida um wet times in florida between now and the weekend you know anybody could get anywhere from one to as much as three inches of rain especially near miami where you'll have a little bit of an onshore flow bringing in a lot of rain activity over the next uh 48 to 72 hours okay so We'll talk a little bit about what can happen Friday. We have that severe weather risk, right? So we'll start out Friday morning. See this low pressure? A uh, little bit of a negatively tilted trough. We'll dig in. Weaker low pressure will develop. It'll kind of meander. And, you know, getting into Friday afternoon, there'll be a dry line set up with um, a trailing cold front behind it. And as we get going, we'll have some initiation of some thunderstorms. Some could be strong and severe here in Oklahoma and Kansas, even down into north northern sections of texas but i do think there'll be more of a cap down here with the placement of low pressure being just a little bit too far north but we keep this going and this low pressure um begins to eject as we get into the middle of the night friday but you know with this you know moving in low pressure we're going to have a yanking in with low level moisture and uh, we got to see what kind of thermodynamics we have in place and speaking of that with the coming in of the um low pressure this begins to bring some decent moisture. You know, we're getting into Friday about midday. Let's take it all the way to about Friday afternoon sometime. Dew points rise all the way into about the low 60s, maybe as far north far north as Oklahoma City. Tulsa, you only got dew points in the 50s. Same thing with Kansas. Dew points only into the 50s based off the European model. We'll see if this uptrends, but then you get into kind of Friday evening, a spike of dews all the way into the 60s, all the way into southern sections of um, Kansas. I would say this might be more moist than what this is showing. Deeper moisture down here, okay, but the low pressure is way up here. So it doesn't matter how much of a nice pool of moisture you have down here. If low pressure is way up, way up here, your lack of forcing, lack of thunderstorm development, a cap in place. So we got that in response, and we'll back it up in response to these dues, okay? I have to do this on the fly. I didn't have all of them pull up. We'll look at the severe weather. We'll look at mixed layer cape in these regions and you know we get into friday and i mean you got some decent storm energy that builds into these regions okay friday afternoon you got mixed layer uh kate building a thousand to fifteen hundred joules per kilogram into this region to oklahoma so i think this is going to be enough fuel to the atmosphere cape um available energy to the atmosphere for these storms to fire I just don't think it's going to be a widespread outbreak. Now, of course, you got a lot of energy down here, but 
you're lacking the real oomph for storm forcing for storms due to remember you got to get closer to that low pressure to get better storm development but um i mean there's already a lot of capes showing up in this region okay so we got to watch out uh, you know i think hail could be a big threat with this but all hazards are possible with this and then you know one thing i always look at is that low level jet winds about four five six thousand feet up in the atmosphere what kind of kinematic atmosphere do we have in place well um you know you got a little bit of that low level jet little skinny low level jet right in here we'll back it up uh come on baby pivotal weather can be um a little bit difficult to use sometimes but you know you get into friday afternoon low level jets better near the placement of the low pressure here in southern kansas 30 40 knot low level jet lacking a little bit down here but you don't need much when you have decent thermodynamics but you still need a little bit to work with but as you're getting into later in the evening low level jet really becomes more widespread but still a skinny corridor a favorable winds aloft 30 40 knot low level level jet in this region and then it really picks up overnight but i think that uh storms really diminish after that so that's all i got guys hope that helps we'll continue to break this down figure it out for you folks over the next uh you know 24 48 hours god bless all y'all i'll talk to you in the morning